Anybody who visits wetlands regularly during migration is familiar with greater and lesser yellow legs, because though they breed far north, they migrate leisurely for two months in spring and two in fall across virtually the entire continent, as you can see by the yellow area. They breed in central Canada and Alaska, winter on the bottom edge of the U.S., and on down into Central and South America, down to its very southern tip. But they spend a third of the year dotting pretty much every wetland you can find in the U.S. In the early half of the 20th century, these birds were much hunted, and one bird historian tells us that many a yellowlegs was shot by an angry hunter as a reward for its exasperating loquaciousness. In short, and they talk too much. Yellowlegs are the rural version of our suburban jays, forever sounding alarms to warn flock mates and all nearby birds of danger. Mostly they're false alarms, but better safe than sorry, right? Say the shorebird, and they flee. And besides, they're not all false alarms. I like the way this bird gets swept up in a retreat from a very real peregrine. Indeed, one of his flockmates failed to leave fast enough and had to hunker down and hope for the best. Unlike the jays, the yellow legs aren't rabble rousers for the sheer raucous fun of it. They're just on the lookout, lest a peregrine falcon swoop in at 200 miles per hour and grab a nearby duck or, worse yet, a tasty yellow legs for lunch. Every one of the dabbling ducks and shorebirds would need a healthy head start to outrun an animal with the eye-boggling speed of a peregrine. And because they know that the fastest animal on earth could rocket across the landscape at them at any moment, it usually takes no more than a hiccup to spook a flock of yellow legs. Other times, the flock is inexplicably unflappable, if you'll pardon the pun. You could do cartwheels on the nearby road and they wouldn't pay attention. It's odd. 